Uh, okay then, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, can you all hear me at the back of the boat now? Fantastic, okay. As we leave the pier, we do have to give you a safety announcement just to familiarise you with a boat that you're travelling on. The boat is equipped with all the modern day life-saving apparatus, life jackets, life rings and life rafts. In the unlikely event of an emergency, further instructions will be given to you by the crew. There is nothing to worry about, you're in very safe hands. Sit back, relax, enjoy the cruise. When boarding the boat, a few people did ask me uh, if there was a, a guided tour on the boat, if there's any commentators. Well, there are no guides or commentators aboard the boats. The couple that we work for, they don't employ multilingual guides on the boats. So what we can do for you, if anybody would like, is point out a few of the buildings, and I'm gonna pass on some of my own local knowledge. Well, I'm not a guide, I'm just a member of the crew. Would anybody like a little bit of a commentary? One person. <laughs> okay. There we are, the lovely ladies at the front. Have you seen these beautiful ladies there? Look. Oh, lovely, isn't they? Okay then, folks. I know there's a few people here. I work with people from uh, Brussels. Is it from Brussels you're from? Belgium. Belgium. Welcome. So, what we do, we start here to the right. We have the London Eye Saw. The London Eye is Europe's largest observation wheel. It stands at 135 metres tall. Consists of 32 individual glass capsules or pods. They each represent a borough in London. The wheel does continuously rotate. You board as it continuously spins. And if you're interested in taking a ride on the London Eye, then it will cost you £19. It will take you as little as 35 minutes. Since opening, the London Eye has carried over 45 million people. And this is London's most visited tourist attraction. Ahead of the boat we have Charing Cross Railway Bridge and as it is the first bridge on our journey and we all seem a little bit uh, sleepy what we're going to do, we're going to beat the ship's horn give the people on the bridge a little smile and a wave come on give us a wave you miserable kids there we go, here far too cool to wave give us a wave hey. my old mate there he is, he's far too posh there's another one on the other side, folks, so don't stop now. Hello there. No, no, give us a wave, mate. No, no, no. Oh, no, there's one. But as written all over them. As we come beneath the bridge, we go to the right, the Royal Festival Hall, which is the only building left over the Festival of Great Britain, 1951, home of the London Symphony Orchestra. Alongside that is the Queen Elizabeth Halls and the Perseal Rooms. These are two small theatres. On the roof is a building which is made of wood. It looks like the front of a ship. Now you can see them two people up there. They're in uh, the single rooms hotel. That's a hotel up there. And it's called a room for London. It's a very cheap way of spending time here in the city. And only £100 per night. The only problem is you're only allowed to stay there for one night. Get in there quickly. I looked on the internet this morning and they are booked up until the end of May. If you think I'm telling you a tall tale, if you see a few people think I'm messing about, look it up. A room for London. We go underneath the Waterloo Road Bridge, known here in London as the Ladies' Bridge. Built 90% by female labour, it was owing to the fact that young men were always fighting in the Second World War. Through the bridge, we go to the right and we have the building with the electronic billboard going across the top. Now that building is this country's national theatre. It does incorporate three of the country's finest auditoriums. The Cottleston, the Littleton, and the largest is the 3,000-seater Olivier, named after Sir Lawrence Olivier, the founder of that theatre. To the left-hand side, you've got the white boat here with the blue flag. Now this is called the St. Catherine. At one time, this used to be the Royal Barge. In the 1960s, it got a little bit outdated. It was then sold off, it's permanently more there as a floating bar. If the Queen or anyone wanted to travel on the river, they would travel on a slightly newer boat called the Royal Nor. That is moored up down at Wapping and downstream. The other white vessel here to our left, the Wellington, a New Zealand gunboat in the First World War. 
now permanently moored here as a floating livery hall for the honourable company of Master Mariners. To become a Master Mariner, you must be a seagoing captain for longer than 15 years. The Duke of Edinburgh, the Queen's husband, is the patron of that society. And we do regularly see the Duke and the Queen stumbling around the foredeck there most Sunday afternoons for a large cigar and an even larger brandy. Talk about the old times. So we look ahead of the boat, we look to the left. We do get our first view of St. Paul's Cathedral. Sir Christopher Wren's masterpiece. It took him 35 years to complete, finally in 1710. Now you can visit St. Paul's. On top of the dome is the viewing platform, and the views are said to be better than the London Eye. Also go down into the crypt. There you'll see the tombs of Admiral Lord Nelson, the Duke of Wellington, and the architect himself. Immediately to our left is a white building with a green sloped roof, the old City of London School for Boys. Been left money since 1441 to educate the boys of London. Look on the front of the building and you can see four statues. From left to right, John Milton, Francis Bacon, Isaac Newton, and William Shakespeare, arguably some of this country's finest scholars. The white semicircular building, Unilever House, home of the Unilever soap and detergent manufacturers. The bridges are black fires. As we come beneath the two bridges, look left and right, and you can see these eight red columns. These red columns were the first foundation pillars of the old Alexander Railway Bridge. Built in 1864 by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. The top of the bridge was taken down in the 1980s due to the heavy modern day trains. The red supports were left through fear of undermining the foundations of the either two bridges. And as we come beneath the bridge, we go to the right and we have the building with the large chimney. This is the old Bankside Power Station. Taken out of commission in the 1970s, it was then turned into the Tate Gallery of Modern Art. Now, Modern Art is becoming very, very popular, certainly in this country. Does anybody on this boat like Modern Art? As you can see, it is very, very popular. If you like my good friend at the front here, and I like Modern Art, you can go in there. At the moment, they have a Damien Hirst exhibition. As a member, it is all free to enter. Once we come past the, uh, the Tate Gallery, we look here once again to the right. The white building with the thatch or straw roof. William Shakespeare's Globe Playhouse Theatre. The only building in London to be made of wooden thatch since the Great Fire of 1666. The red flag which we see flying there, that indicates that a play is in session. They do reenact all of Shakespeare's 38 different plays in Sonnet in 38 different names. The bridge is Southwark, built in 1921 to ease the congestion of the old London Bridge. It is said to be London's least used bridge, and that is due to the approach roads hidden in a maze of one-way streets and no entrance. They do say if you find yourself up on top of the bridge, then you are more than likely lost or very, very drunk. Avoid the bridge at all costs. And if you're thinking about having a few glasses of beer this evening, you may want to come over back over to Bankside. At Bankside, you can see one of the oldest pubs to span the Thames. It's called the Anchor Tavern at Bankside. Established in the year 1615, it was used as the changing facilities of the old Globe Theatre. Samuel Pepys, the famous British diarist, Dr. Johnson, Marlowe, and even William Shakespeare frequented this establishment. Once we come through the bridge, we go to the right, and we see the black pirate ship, a one-to-one -one working replica of Sir Francis Drake's ship, the Golden Hind. Drake was the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe back in 1580. The vessel is now run by the National Geographical Society. The bridge ahead of us, London Bridge, not to be confused with Tower Bridge. You can see the name is etched into the stonework. The new London Bridge was placed in 1974. 
free. There's been a bridge on this site for nearly 2,000 years. The first one was built by the Romans back in 49 AD. The most famous of all the bridges was the medieval London Bridge. It spanned this site from the year 1209 for over 600 years. And that is a bridge which fell down. If we look to the left, you can see the white column with the golden ball of flame. And that is Sir Christopher Wren's monument to the Great Fire of London. It stands at 202 feet tall. If it was to fall in an easterly direction, it would then pinpoint where that fire started in the Royal Bakeries. Back to the right, we have London's newest skyscraper. This is called the Shard. It was opened on the 1st of February uh, this year. And in doing so, it took the title of the tallest building in Western Europe. It stands at 310 metres tall. Luxury living quarters, office spaces, and the Shangri-La Hotel. Designed by the Italian architect, Renzo Pier. Now folks, don't worry about the bridge ahead of us, that's Tower Bridge. And I think you, uh, you're pretty interested in what I've got to say. So as opposed to going straight into the pier, which is there to the left, is it right to go down and turn the boat? And we can have a nice view of the bridge? Yeah. Yeah, okay, fantastic. Uh, we've got the HMS Belfast here to our right. She was the last of the town class cruisers. She was built in Belfast, Northern Ireland in 1936 at a Harlan and Wolf shipyard. The same shipyard which built the ill-fated Titanic. She saw action in the Second World War and is now permanently moored here as a floating museum, a mark to British sea power. So we're going to turn the boat down. As we do so, we do get a lovely side-on view of the uh, Tower Road Bridge. The Tower Bridge is not as old as it looks. It was built in the Gothic style to blend in with its near neighbour, the Tower of London. Now the Tower Bridge really is one of a kind. A part suspension bridge, and a part, a part suspension bridge and a part battery bridge. He doesn't realise it's going to be on the other side. Now the, uh, the centrepieces are the bascals. They can be risen in a matter of 90 seconds to let larger shipping into this part of London. We don't get much commercial traffic here in London. That's due to the containerisation. But we do regularly see warships, cruise ships. There's a tall masted sailing vessel that's waiting to come up. So if you get off the boat, folks, when we get on the next pier and you walk along the